Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're here in beautiful Jackson Hole, Wyoming for the start of the Pedigree Stage Stop Race. I'm Bruce Lee. This is Sebastian Schnuller. Hey, he got it pretty good this time. <laughs> and we're going to tell you a little bit about this race today. Uh, it's a pretty exciting race with a different format than a lot of races. It's a stage stop which means it's run pretty much along the formula like a Tour de France bike race, different stages, different challenges every day. Sebastian's been here. I've run this three times. Sebastian's been here covering this race for a, a number of years. So in the beginning, just explain a little bit, Sebastian, about how this thing with a dog pool works. What is a dog pool? Well, when you have the long races like the Ritterrad, you have to start with a set number of 14 dogs and you can leave dogs behind and not add back into it. Here, you have 14 dogs checked in the vet check. Those are the dogs you can draw from every day. You can run 10 dogs a day. You can also run less. So you see sometimes lighter mushers running only eight or nine dogs during the first stages. And um, a dog doesn't have to run every single stage. They can sit a stage out and a new dog can be added. So that pool is basically a rotating pool they can use for all of the seven stages. And it's a it's a cool race with the pool format, you know, because you not only are you managing like your dog's speeds and everything over seven days, but you've got 14 dogs and you're only hooking 10 per day. So like there could be a lot of strategy that goes into which dogs you're resting on which day. Like, you know, one, somebody might rest two dogs today because tomorrow they they know those dogs are going to be really good at that stage, maybe because that stage has a lot of climbing or, you know, whatever. So it's pretty, adds a pretty fun element of strategy to the sport. And those seven stages are going to be all over the state of Wyoming. We're going to go through eight different mountain ranges. We're going to go down to southwestern Wyoming, uh, starting here in Jackson, going along to different communities along the way, and then end up actually in Driggs, Idaho for the final stage and where we'll know who the champion is of this year's race. So we'll go over those, those points each day of where we're at and what the trail might be like. Now today is orientation day, so to speak, for all of the mushers. They have a mushers meeting early this morning. Every dog on every truck that's gonna run went through a vet check. Every dog here is checked by the veterinary staff. We have five veterinarians that travel the race and they'll look at the condition of the dogs every day. They also will be helping the mushers with any little issues they might have. So on our checks, we go through every dog and do a basic health check. Basic, but becomes more detailed. So we're checking, initially we get in there, we have a look at them. We wanna listen to all their hearts. We want to make sure that they're, you know, we've got an, a normal beat um, there's no irregularities. Uh, we also check orthopedic, we check the body condition score, that's a big one, to make sure that we are nice and uh, filled out, that there's no real thin dogs. Okay, these guys train really hard and sometimes they come in a little bit thin, sometimes they come in a little bit overweight. <laughs> so ideally, we just are looking for a, a, a good baseline for these guys. Uh, the other thing is we go through an orthopedic exam, so we're checking range of motion. Um, we do check feet, so it's a fairly quick check, but these guys are pros, so they've done a lot of vet checks and we've seen a lot of sled dogs. So we are just making sure that they are ready to go. This type of race, dogs have to be in tip-top shape. They're only going to go about 35 miles a day, but it's really steep terrain. And I would say in general, these dogs, the, what I saw today are they're very lean, but they're very muscled up to go up and travel this steep terrain. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, they're, they're a different type of dogs. They're definitely houndier, speedier. And with what they have to do here, compared to the long races, they're basically running two hours a day, two and a half hours a day. And then when you look at a lot of those rigs, they're heated, they're being treated inside of, of the big trailers, they're basically sleeping in a warm spa at night compared to their little dogs who sleep on the gangland. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a pretty major difference here. And um, the veterinarians also, you can ask them many times throughout the day, throughout the evening, hey, can you come check back on my dogs? Can you take another look? That makes this race pretty unique when it, when it comes down to it. 
And the care and health of the dogs is paramount. What I saw today was I was really expecting in some of the kennels a little bit smaller dog, but I talked to a couple of the top mushers from last year and they said their males are all 60 pound males pretty much and they wanted those for getting up the hills. Well, those are serious hills here. I mean, they're, they're sometimes five miles straight climbing up. That's why you also see a lot of kennels like Jake Robinson right now, not running himself, putting a lighter musher onto the team because big male dogs, a lighter musher makes a big difference in this race. I have been here many years, um, not as a musher though. Um, this will be my first time running the pedigree stage job. Um, I've ran the eight dog classic three times um, and I've handled at this race for 10 years, so. It used to be 12 dogs. There used to be a, a, bigger, a bigger team you could run in a day. Now it's 10 dogs and those mountains, they're there, they're steep. You gotta be loping, even in the uphills. Yeah, we're gonna see some pretty, pretty extreme grades. We're gonna get into that 10, 12% grades. A lot of teams are gonna downshift on that stuff, but for the most part, you want a, you want a nice, easy, efficient loping dog on this race. I use in Quebec to race when it's a little bit hilly, but never like this. You know, at one place, I think you run for five miles. You go uphill so bad that uh, we cannot see this in Quebec. I tried to teach these guys how to gear down and trot when they need to, when the trail, I've had a lot of ice to deal with this year and I still want, had to get the miles on them. So if the, if the trail conditions were crappy, then we slowed down and ran. And then as soon as they picked up, my leaders will perk up their ears and off we go again. So, so in this format, uh, each stage, each day is at a completely different location. So look at the map here. You'll see that the areas we're traveling through in Wyoming. So tomorrow we start outside of Jackson Hole. They call it Black Rocks. It's actually a very scenic area. It's right halfway. It's at the north end of Grand Tetons National Park and the beginning of Yellowstone National Park. So a little bit about the stages that they travel on this, Sebastian. Yeah, and from Black Rock, um, right after the stage, when the mushas finish, they have to drive to the next stage, which is Lander, and that's where we have an overnight. And in Lander the next day, um, the trail is pretty high up on a pass, um, very windy usually. And with all the snow we are getting, that could get uh, pretty interesting. From Lander, we then travel over to Pinedale. And many times the actual starting areas are about half an hour to one hour out of town, where the mushers have to go to in the morning. Then from Pinedale, we head over to Big Piney Marbleton. Um, again, the start there is in a valley. It's known for a little lesser snow, typically. So from what I understand, they changed the trail a little bit this year. They shortened it by a few miles. It's not going to be a 35. It's more going to be like a 30. From there, we, we um, head over to Camera. That's a relatively short drive. Amazing enough, it's maybe 50 miles as the crow flies. Lots of snow in that valley. Lots of moose in that valley too, so it's pretty interesting for the dog teams. And then we head over to Alpine, snow machine country. We are on the other side of a mountain range, which receives about double of the snow here. And um, the race has to start pretty early in the morning, so we dodge all the snow machine traffic. There's a traveling day before the last uh, stage in Drake's, and that one is in Idaho, and that's where there's also the uh, finishing banquet. And that's an area known for really deep snow and drigs as well. And I bet it's dumping over there right now. So the mushers are not only navigating and racing the trail every day, they're also negotiating traveling to all these different communities, which adds a logistical aspect of the things they have to take care of. But it's also exciting because they're not just racing the same trail every day. There's actually a traveling mechanic um, following without the, with the whole crew here who helps to keep all the rigs on the road, because every year quite a few things happen with so many miles and so many dog trucks. So not only are we traveling the trails and the roads around Wyoming, mushers have come here from really long distances. Uh, all over the States, Canada, our farthest uh, competitor is from your home country, Germany. He's actually pretty close from where I grew up from, Northern, Northern Germany, not a mountain inside, flatlands, uh, Michael Tetzner. He has been doing this for quite a few years. Um, he usually keeps his dog truck in Calgary, Alberta, flies his dogs from Frankfurt with a big cargo plane, 
And then he lives out of his truck for many months because from here he's going to West Yellowstone and then up to Alaska. Oh, you know, I am a racer. I like to ride, run everywhere in the world and I had a dream to run the stage shop one time at least. And then we had the corona time, so it was bad to come and I was with all people in contact. And then we always flew from Frankfurt to Calgary, so it's easier to go down here as going up to Alaska, you know. So, so that was the decision to come here and then we want to see how it goes here, right? Any Melo? She usually is the one with the furthest drive from Quebec. Mm -hmm. We have a few mushers from Quebec. Annie has dominated this race the last four years. She is currently the person to beat. In any race, in any format of sled dog racing, when a person has four wins, they are a dominant force. You know, we knew how to train to do 35 miles, and, uh, and the trail is a little bit like what we have in Quebec, too. So maybe that's part of the reason we are um, Succeeding too in that time, that kind of format. Uh, we are in hilly trails and uh, not in altitude though, but still, no. The dogs know how to climb a mountain, and and I know how to drive the dogs too. You know, I know that you don't have to go too fast and downhill and all that. We have mushers from Michigan, from the group from Minnesota. I uh, know I'll leave some of them out. Washington State, Oregon. So people all come here to Jackson Hole to participate in this event because of the uniqueness of the format and just because it's wonderful snowy country to bring sled dogs to. It's, it's tricky. Uh, just getting here is tricky um, and takes a lot of effort. Uh, where we start training in September and we usually train day on day off um, until we show up usually two weeks ahead of time to get acclimated. Uh, to the elevation. So it's a big time commitment and you gotta love it. You gotta love the sport. Wasn't gonna say this too much, but my first dog race was in 1973. That makes it 50 years. Nice. Yeah, amazing. Hey, and so my brother raced, my children race, my grandchildren are now starting some of their races. Out of Minnesota, that's where we've been around a little bit though. So last year I used it as a training race to get ready. Um, usually my team is running the 100 mile races. And so stage stop is kind of a good push off point. And so last year coming was, you know, it, it's a lot figuring out the traveling logistics and, you know, racing for that many days in a row. But uh, this year definitely feeling a lot more comfortable and comfortable with my dog team too. So not only the mushers come from all over the world, fans come here to Jackson Hole, a lot of them to ski, of course, but also to see this event uh, kick off here in Jackson Hole. And people are gonna be following this race from all over the world. We are going to be traveling along the entire race course, putting up content every day of the dogs, interviews with the mushers, a little bit about the communities that we're traveling through. So you, can, you can look on Instagram, We'll have, Sebastian will be posting a lot on Facebook Live. We'll have uh, on the Facebook page. Uh, also uh, the main site on wyomingstagestop.org. So there's gonna be content coming in and on YouTube this year as well. There's already stuff up, right? So it's a combination of all of the common social media things, YouTube, Facebook. If you want more information on these mushers, the wyomingstagestop.org has got profiles on all the mushers and, the, and a lot about the communities we'll be traveling through as well. And that's where the standings will be of each day and then the cumulative state, uh, standings um, to see where the mushers stand overall. Um, every day one musher will get the yellow bib. The yellow bib changes hands, kind of like in the Tour de France, whoever won that stage. It's a reverse starting order. That musher will go out last um, during the following stage with a yellow bib. So that's actually pretty exciting. It's usually a yellow bib ceremony um, after each stage. Sometimes we do it in the morning before the following stage. Um, time will tell how many times Annie will have it or who can challenge her this year. And also mushers start here in reverse order, which is an interesting thing. By that, I mean, the slowest team from the day before goes out first. The fastest team goes out last. So they look at their times, it's an accumulative timed race. And so it's a reverse order, which makes for a lot of passing out on the trail and everyone coming in to the finish line at close to the same time. It adds a real fun dynamic. But 
I get the feeling this year there's probably four or five teams that are really going to be pushing for those top position that top position. Do you think any of them can take it away from Annie? Well, time will tell. I mean, there's usually a dark horse somewhere. And the neat thing about this trail is it's also an out and back trail. So not only do you have all the passing going on, you have head on passes. So sometimes it happens usually by the turnaround, by the halfway point, you have teams catching up to each other while you already have the first teams heading your way. So in a span of a couple of hundred yards, there might be four or five teams um, within each other. That makes for some pretty exciting footage. So we'll be here every day. We'll be doing roundups at the end of the day, telling you how the day's event went. Uh, went. And then we'll also be uh, just showing you scenes from the trail of the dogs running because the dogs are the stars. They're gonna have some great footage of sled dogs running through the mountains of Wyoming. And we'll be right at every stage and right to the finish line. So you can pick your method of watching, but if you wanna see sled dogs and you wanna follow the pedigree stage stop race, we're gonna have a lot of content. It's already going up right now. So we're gonna to end today with sights and sounds from downtown Jackson Hole and the ceremonial start of the Pedigree Stage Stop Sled Dog Race. Two teams side by side. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go! I'll see you every day. You know, it's like Groundhog Day. Everywhere I go, dog teams show up.